Let's start with the animals that are collapsing ecosystems and slowly work our way towards the ones destroying entire continents. Number 8. Silver Carp Silver Carp are some of the most destructive invasive fish that can infest any body of water. But I must admit, it's the only invasive animal on the list that is actually funny. We've all seen the videos where the fish launch themselves out of the water, smacking people on the side of the head or body. Now of course, they sometimes send people to the hospital with broken bones or concussions. But that's just a small price to pay for comedy. Silver carp have caused the most destruction here in the US, specifically in the Mississippi and its connecting rivers. The carp were first brought from Asia and introduced into the US in the 1970s by companies trying to clean their private lakes. This is because carp are filter feeders and consume algae, plankton, or really any small particle suspended in the water. But of course, the fish ended up escaping during a flood, making their way into the Mississippi River, where they quickly multiplied into the millions. Today, these rivers are absolutely overrun by these fish, since they easily outcompete native animals for food. Many states are trying everything they can to stop the carps from spreading, from shocking the water to hurting them with enormous nets. They have even created a sport to try and get rid of them. And since this is America, of course, the sport is just shooting them. For example, in Kentucky, the Department of Fish and Wildlife hosts bow fishing tournaments where participants kill as many of the fish as they possibly can, with the winner taking home $10,000. But another way people can come together to help fight this invasive species is by simply eating them. Yes, the fish is very healthy, has minimal to no mercury, is packed with vitamins and minerals, and great for overall health. Which is the exact reason Americans don't eat it. Number 7. Cane Toads Invasive cane toads are some of the most destructive animals on the entire planet, and in many cases have single-handedly collapsed entire ecosystems. The toad is native to South and Mainland Central America, but thanks to humans, they have been introduced to various parts of the world. But let's just take a look at Australia, since it's perhaps the place that has been the most devastated. In 1935, 102 cane toads were released into the wild in hopes that they would eat the cane grub a small larva that was decimating sugarcane crops. Sugar scientists must have just taken a look at their names and figured that the cane toad must eat the cane grub, since their names were practically a match. But as it turns out, the cane toad eats just about everything, from birds, insects, reptiles, rodents, and even dog food. But the one thing they don't eat, you guessed it, are the cane grubs. And just to rub it in the scientists' faces, they would even prefer to eat trash before the grubs reminding the scientists yet again how much of massive failures they truly are. Today, there are around 200 million cane toads in Australia, and that number is only growing. Now, let's just take a look at the cane toad up close. At first glance, you might think, not bad. Solid forearms, great traps, and decent lats, but makes the common mistake of ignoring half its body. Now, it may come as a surprise, but those are not its traps. Those are actually parotid glands, where deadly poison is released. In fact, this poison has led to a massive decline of quolls, monitor lizards, crocodiles, and snakes, which are all native and important to Australia's ecosystem. But the good news is that some animals are just now beginning to adapt to the toad's poison. For example, the Ruckley have begun to flip toads over, avoiding the poison glands, then surgically removing and eating the toad's hearts. Now surprisingly, cane toads eat so much of the native wildlife that nothing is left for other cane toads. So they have turned to eating the most abundant source of food, each other. If you live in Australia and you happen to come across a cane toad, it is recommended that you pick them up and place them inside of your fridge for 24 hours, followed by placing them in the freezer for a couple of days before finally throwing them in the trash. Number 6. Rabbits. The war with rabbits is perhaps the bloodiest in all of history. Australia and New Zealand have been hit the hardest by these destructive pests. But today, we're just going to take a look at Australia as I believe it's been hit the worst of the two. In 1859, a man named Thomas Austin, a wealthy settler, imported 24 wild rabbits from England. He released the animals on his property so he can later hunt them for sport and eat them. But very quickly, the rabbits managed to escape and the rabbit population exploded. With no natural predators, those 24 rabbits multiplied to over 10 billion. This is what that looked like. This many rabbits easily collapsed the entire ecosystem of Australia by consuming the majority of the vegetation, leaving very little for the native animals. Australians tried their best to hunt as many of the animals as they could, but no matter how many they killed, it wouldn't come close to making a dent. 
So instead, the Australian government turned to bioweapons. In the 1950s, scientists released a rabbit-specific virus called Myxoma virus, which wiped out a good chunk of the population. But eventually, the rabbits developed immunity to the virus. So again, in the 1980s, scientists released a new targeted virus. This time, it would be rabbit hemorrhagic disease, which only took 48 hours to kill and would end up eradicating 90% of the rabbit population in many areas. But once again, the rabbits began to develop immunity. Today, this game of catch-up continues, and there are still over 200 million rabbits in Australia, happily destroying everything they touch. Number 5. Rodents Why does it always have to be rats? Probably the most obvious pick on the list, and easily the most annoying, are rats and mice. These disgusting little pests have been following humans around the world for at least 15,000 years. But who can blame them? After all, humans leave behind the best loot. Now, in the majority of cities and towns, rats and mice are just a nuisance. But of course, in places like New York, they're just your roommates. One of the places where invasive rats and mice have caused the most destruction is actually on islands. For example, islands like Hawaii, Galapagos Islands, and New Zealand have seen a massive decline in their wildlife and forests since rats and mice arrived. New Zealand alone has lost 40 to 50% of their bird species, and many more are currently facing the threat of extinction. This is because rats consume the majority of the native animals' foods, like insects, seeds, and fruits. But of course, they'll also eat the animals themselves. And when animals finally build up the courage to eat the mice or rats for a change, it quickly backfires, since the odds of them getting sick from a deadly disease skyrockets. Now, even though many animals eat rodents, they reproduce at such high rates that it makes it impossible to eradicate them completely. Number 4. Burmese Python The Burmese Python is one of the largest snakes in the world, only behind the terrifying anaconda and reticulated python. Native to Southeast Asia, this snake would make its way into Florida in the 1980s and 90s, thanks to exotic animal collectors. You see, originally, these exotic pet owners only saw a snake that only required a baby mouse or two to survive. But eventually, the snake would grow larger and larger, requiring a bigger and more expensive meal like a rat or bird, and eventually, a chipotle burrito. So realizing that they are slowly going broke and losing hope that someone would someday say, cool snake, they come to the logical conclusion of simply releasing the snake into the wild, making their problem everyone else's. Today, there are tens of thousands of Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades, consuming just about anything that moves, from birds and mammals to alligators and crocodiles. And in some parts of the Everglades, animals have declined by over 90% after the snake's arrival. Today, many people in Florida hunt these snakes as a full-time job, earning as much as $150 for every 8-foot snake they catch. The difficult part is that these snakes are some of the best at hide-and-seek, since they love to hide in dense vegetation, underground, in the water, and even in the trees. And in a surprise turn of events, when you least expect it, these snakes could find and tag you says it's not uncommon for the snakes to work their way through plumbing systems and into toilets. Even though Florida memes are funny, we have to give credit where credit is due. Florida can hang their alligator skin hat knowing that they are currently in first place for having the most amount of invasive animals on the planet. Number 3. Wild Pigs This is the only animal on the list that I've encountered firsthand. And trust me, they are as mean and disgusting as they look. I've had wild pigs threaten to charge at me up close, but once it got a good look at my insane physique, it of course cowered it out by not chasing me. Wild pigs are native to Eurasia and parts of North Africa, but were brought over to the US, Australia, and Europe as a food source. But you will never guess what happened next. They escaped, and in the wild, their numbers quickly exploded. One interesting thing to note is that it took humans thousands of years to domesticate wild pigs into the smooth and gentle pink giants we see on farms today. But if that same pig managed to escape into the wild in a matter of months, it would revert back to its original form and look like this which makes me sick just looking at it. <laughs> a wild pig can grow as large as 150 pounds. And before you say, what about Hogzilla? He was much larger. But that was nothing more than a cheap and disgusting perspective trick that hunters like to abuse, making the animal look much larger. Of course, I only do this when holding a fish. After all, how else would I convince my friends that I know what I'm doing? 
Now let's talk about why these animals are so destructive. For one, pigs are omnivores and opportunistic feeders, so they will eat pretty much anything, leaving nothing behind for native animals. One of the most destructive habits of wild pigs is rooting, where they dig into the ground to consume the plant's roots, which destroys the soil and kills native plants, preventing them from growing again. Another terrible habit that pigs have is wallowing, where they roll around in the mud next to a water source, contaminating the water with bacteria, diseases, and parasites, which affects the native wildlife that drink the water. Now here in America, farmers and landowners are sick of these pigs and are fighting back the only way we know how, which is by shooting them with high caliber machine guns from helicopters. After all, there is no other way. Now, I know what you're thinking. Lucky them. But don't worry, you can always pay to experience this for yourself. Number 2. The Brown Tree Snake The brown tree snake is a mildly venomous snake native to Australia, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. But during the 1940s, the US military accidentally brought the snake to Guam, most likely in shipping containers or in cargo. Today, there are around 2 million of these snakes on the island, or around 3,000 snakes per square mile, making it almost impossible not to run into them. Here on the island, picking up common items like tree branches, logs, and cords, are all a frightening game of roulette. The brown tree snake is the only species of snake on the entire island, which hasn't allowed enough time for the native animals to adapt accordingly, leading to 7 out of 18 native bird species to become extinct, permanently changing Guam's ecosystem. But not only are these snakes eating all the native animals on the island, they are also constantly causing power outages, since they love to climb on transformers and electrical lines, causing them to short circuit. Today, US authorities are fighting back by using helicopters to drop thousands of dead mice onto the trees for the snakes to eat. The free meal comes with a deadly amount of painkillers, which are glued onto the mice, causing the snakes to die soon after eating them. But only time will tell if this proves to be an effective way of controlling the snake population before all the native birds and animals are completely wiped out. Number 1. Feral Cats Who would have thought that these cute and cuddly animals would be capable of so much death and destruction? Well, anyone who lives with one could have told you that. Yes, the deadliest and most destructive invasive animal in the world was right next to us the entire time. And in all honesty, we should have seen this one coming, since all the signs were there. To see just how much of an impact cats can have on an ecosystem, or in this case, an entire continent, we just have to take a look at Australia. In the 18th century, cats arrived in Australia on ships to help manage the rat and mouse populations. But over time, cats got sick of being around humans, and figured that starting a new life in the Australian outback was a way better option. And in no time, the feral cat population exploded. Today, there are anywhere from 2 to 10 million cats in the wild and are directly linked to the extinction of many native species and the endangerment of hundreds more. And since cats have no natural predators and many options for food, that number is only growing. It's estimated that 1 million native birds and reptiles are killed every single day by feral cats and well over a billion animals every single year, making them the deadliest invasive animal on the planet. So in an attempt to lower the feral cat population, authorities are deploying poison baits in areas with high concentration of cats. And in certain areas, hunters are paid to trap and kill the animal, being paid $10 per cat scalp. Now another tactic that is being implemented is simply giving up. Creating a 27 mile cat free zone by enclosing it with an electric fence to protect native animals. Essentially providing them with a the little safe haven inside of a maximum security prison. 